Okay, welcome everyone. We're doing some work out of the textbook um, and now we're going to do some equations that involve fractions and I'm sure that's going to um, fill some people with horror but um, I think it's good practice and a good time to remember some of those skills that we've been working on with fractions and uh, it seems a while ago now but here we go. Um, I want you, this is what I want you to think about. Um, I see a lot of students get confused. They quickly look at that and they see, see the line, but they don't see the two little dots. So they might think something, subtract another thing, whatever they are, whatever numbers they are, who knows. Um, and I've made that mistake a hundred times over. So what I, I actually prefer setting things up this way. Um, I like setting it up as a fraction because it lets, sometimes lets me see ways to cancel and simplify those fractions. And I'll point that out in the video uh, to you, some, some really good examples of that. Um, and we, I guess you're at that stage where you've been, it's been drummed into you a nice little neat line um, and create your fraction there. That line's called the vinculum. <clears throat> But um, I, these days I'm into big fat lines, all right? Uh, nice, big, long vinculum because there's, there's a lot of, I don't know whether I should say this, but I, I just look at all this junk up here and I see all this above the line is divided by three. Um, and one little tip I've got here, and I'll reinforce this during the video, is that I often put a set of brackets around here. I use bod mass to my advantage here because everything up on the numerator here is divided by three. The four is divided by three in this setup and the A is divided by three as well. Okay, by putting my brackets around all this business up in here um, on the numerator, it helps protect all that and it helps me keep it together here um, because my first move here I see that it's divided by three my first move will and I'll reinforce this all the time the opposite of division is multiplication so I'm going to multiply both sides by three if this was equal to something and I had to do some work okay which is the setup you'll have in a moment so I'll run you through those questions and you'll see me do all this kind of stuff and it's for a good reason and hopefully understand those reasons, okay? Now we're working on algebraic fractions and this, like I said, is probably gonna scare a lot of people, but um, they've got to tie a lot of skills in here uh, when we do this unit. We've done fractures previously, or if you haven't, we just need this little reminder that I've written up here that when we look at fractions, we've got a numerator and we've got a denominator. And I know we've got a fraction button on the calculator that is a box and a line and a box to represent the same things. Or we could, um, so we can put any number we like into this box and any number we like into this box here and, and hit the buttons and, and do the calculations for us. And eventually you get calculators where you can put in the algebraic fractions and, and it will solve it for you. So. Um, but we need to have the understanding, I guess, and what we can write is a, uh, any number a divided by, we can use a vinculum, that line, uh, any other number. They could be the same, they could be different. Um, and of course we represent that as a divided by b. We think the numerator, whatever's on the numerator is divided by what's on the denominator. So, um, they're important things to keep in mind. So. When we're doing algebraic fractions, let's just do a real simple one. And we might have something like uh, m divided by any number that we can think of, divided by 6. But let's place some cons constraints on it, or well, whatever it is, it's got, got to be equal to 2. So we could get into a guessing game here and start thinking a couple of different ways about it. We can start guessing. Uh, thinking about a number, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 12 divided by 6 is 2. We can do it that way. So we know our value of m is 12. Okay, another way to, th what, what is 12? Uh, 12 is 6 times 2. 
So in actual fact, I'll just change the color of my pen here. Uh, our answer is staring us in the face and the denominator here multiplied by the answer on the right hand side, if you like, multiply those together and we get 12 and that's the value of M. That was a little puzzle that we worked out. So let's have a go at another example and I hope I don't run out of board here. So let's try this and let's make that equal to 12. Now that looks a little bit more scary. So perhaps we can rewrite this uh, and, and we can use our, um, if we're dividing by five, we can multiply by five. So I'm gonna do that to both sides and rewrite this equivalent equation as 3u equals 60. And now I can see the value of u and that's gotta be equal to 20. So there's, there's a number there. But what I wanna to say to you with that last example, I might rewrite it up here. There's, if your knowledge of fractions is good, you can use that to your advantage. So I left a little bit of a space in here. I'm gonna multiply what I see on the left-hand side by the reciprocal of the fraction that I see. And that's a nice way because those guys are gonna cancel and those guys are gonna cancel. So I'm gonna set this guy up as a fraction and I've just got to be careful there that I use the reciprocal. And if you're good at cancelling down fractions, three goes into three once and on the diagonal here, three goes into 12 four times. So what am I left with? Four times five over one. And so my value of u is equal to 20. So I'm just going to encourage you, um, if you understand reciprocals, Um, use them. If you don't, what would, might encourage you to use them is uh, it's two steps rolled into one and it's a good thing to use at the right time because you can uh, unwind two steps in the puzzle with one move if you like. So it's a bit of a ninja move. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So Let's look at a few more that's a little bit more complicated here. So I might redraw that down a little bit lower. And what have I got? I've got h plus 15 over 12 is equal to two. Okay, so let's unwind this puzzle in different ways. Let's, let's uh, look at this and we could look at the top line, which is h plus 15. And if we use a trick before, if we went two times, two times 12, that's gotta be equal to 24. So what's up on the numerator there? It looks like this, it's gotta be equal to 24. And that's the statement that I've written as my equivalent equation here. So final job, we might be able to see the answer already, so, but let's subtract 15 off both sides and we're left with uh, h is equal to nine. Okay, um, that's, that's a good way to do it and um, I'd encourage you to set things up that way. So um, let's try another one. Let's look at a different variation on the same, same sort of general idea. Um, this time we've got seven n over five as a separate little algebraic fraction and we're adding 14 to it. So, um, and the result is 21. Okay, if I covered up, if I covered up all this bit here, I would have to think that it has to be a seven plus 14 is equal to 21. So with that little bit of thinking, maybe I could write out a, another equivalent equation here. All this stuff has to be equal to seven. Okay, I'm going to change the color of my pen because we can multiply by five and then divide by seven. And there's other little tricks that if you, once you learn them and see them, um, life's a bit easier. 
Right, I'm looking at this. I'm just going to shift sideways. I know that 7 on the left-hand side has to be equal to 7. So if I did this 7 times 5 divided by 5, that would cancel and give me 7. So I'm looking at the denominator now and seeing the value of n. It has to be a 5. All right. Or if you like, if you want to use what I told you about reciprocals, we can set it up like this. And we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And um, that's going to be equal to 7 over 1. I'm going to haven't changed the value of it. Anything with a denominator of 1 is just that same, same number again. And I'm going to times this by 5 over 7. And this time the 7s cancel. These guys cancel. This cancels. The value of n is what we're left with, which is a 5. Okay. So you've got all those little options and different ways of seeing things, or you can roll through, roll through the whole um, procedure in sort of algebraic autopilot, if you like. So if we're, we're going to do that autopilot mode, I'm going to times both sides by five, they cancel, and then I'm left with seven n equals 35 then I'm going to divide by 7 and n 7 goes in here once and it goes in here five times so I got my 5 back again all right so that's why I'm encouraging you to actually try to grapple with what I'm trying to tell you here because they're smart moves and they save you a bit of work um, but eventually, however you get to the answer, that's that's okay. So, I'm just writing a new equation here, and this one's a little bit more difficult. And I'm just encouraging you to um, follow the process, okay? It gets a little bit tricky to see what the value of um, x needs to be, okay? We can spend a lot of time guessing what that needs to be. But I'm seeing that everything inside the brackets, uh, I think that everything inside the brackets needs to be equal to 12. And once I see that, I'll probably get to the answer pretty quickly. But we can follow the algebra here because the denominator is 4, and so we're thinking about this as dividing by 4. So the opposite operation is multiplying both sides by 4. And, and look what happens straight away. I get to that thing that I was thinking about, um, and that's equal to 12. Okay, so I changed the color of my pen, and I'm thinking about unwinding this one step further, and um, I'm subtracting 5 from both sides, and they'll cancel. So I end up with 2x is equal to um, 7, and that I know I've got to, in my next move, divide by 2. And my answer's going to come out as a decimal if I, I, I want to turn it into a decimal. So I could stop and think about this as x is equal to 3.5 and write that. But what I'm encouraging you to do, if you follow the algebra through, and I'm rewriting this, and I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. Okay? Um... And the reason I'm doing that is because that's nice and handy for me. If this is correct, I can come back in here and substitute in this value of um, x, which I think is uh, 7 over 2, and just check that it's right. And not only that, I'm going to use this line of my working to help me uh, think that get it, get it right. So... I just know what's inside the brackets must equal 12. So if I write out 2x plus 5, and then I substitute in the value of x, which is 7 over 2 um, plus 5, look what happens here. If you're good with cancelling down fractions, you know, 2 over 1 uh, divided by uh, times by 7 over 2, those 2s are going to cancel on the di diagonal there. So what am I left with? Um, left with um, 7 plus 5, and 7 plus 5 
e is equal to 12 and everything works out real nice from there. So what I'm encouraging you to do right now is with algebraic fractions, leave them as improper fractions as your answer rather than a decimal because it makes it easier to check what you're doing. So I've got one final example here where um, it helps us uh, do exactly that because look, this is tricky. On the right hand side, we've got something that's equal to three quarters and it's not quite obvious to me what that number needs to be and I'm not going to enter into a guessing game trying to plug in values. I'm going to use my techniques and I'm seeing dividing this whole thing divided by six so I'm multiplying by six. I'm going to times that by six over one. They're going to cancel and while I'm thinking about it I'm just going to write out what's remaining on the left hand side. Without the brackets now I don't need those brackets they're not serving their purpose anymore. So I'm going to write it out like this and I'm going to come back in here and use my skills of looking for common factors. I see two is a common factor here. It goes into four two times and two goes into six three times. So what am I left with? Uh, nine over two. Just multiplying the numerators then multiplying the denominators I end up with nine over two. Now that's still not really helpful because it's there's a bit of work there, right? And here's my next move. I'm adding four to both sides. <clears throat> and all I'm left with is 3x is equal to something. But I've got some work to do on this side. I'm thinking about 4 as 8 over 2. Uh, using my knowledge of improper fractions just to change the value. Still value of 4, but it's represented as 8 over 2. Because what I want to do next, I've got a common denominator of 2. And... Um, thinking back to the skills and fractions. If the denominators are the same, we can simply add the numerators. So what do I end up with next is 17 over two. Now this is getting closer to the answer. I got three times something equals 17 over two. And I, standing here talking to you right now, I cannot guess what that needs to be. So I'm going to divide both sides by th three, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to times this by one over three. I'm thinking about the reciprocal of this and I'm using multiplication of fractions to help me out here. It's a lot easier than dividing fractions as you will probably remember. So that's uh, 17 over multiply the denominator 17 over 6. There's no way I would have guessed that and no one's expecting you to guess it and know it and to be honest with you if you haven't got the techniques down then you'll stop really quickly on these types of questions um, because you simply cannot see the answer and you might consider yourself being to be really good at maths and suddenly things have got a little bit too hectic a little bit too complicated and um, you're not seeing what what it needs to be so I'm going to check and I'm going to use this line in here to help me check that I've got it right um, equals 9 over 2 and my value is up here uh, so 3 over 1 times 17 over 6, subtract 4, but I'm going to turn 4 into uh, 8 over 2 like I did before. And I'm just checking that this is going to work out okay. So what am I left with? I'm left with 17 over minus 8 over 2, and that is equal to 9 over 2. So I know I've got the right value, and that's what I'm just encouraging you to uh, do because um, it's a complicated process and eventually when you get to the answer I really encourage you to leave it as an improper fraction because you can see how easily it is to slot back in to your original equation or some part of your original equation just to check that it's right okay thank you